thinking higher thoughts, core connection to the absolute, the opposite of stress. I should also point out that um, there were people who said they couldn't really put into words some of these states, so they did their best. That, that's, of course, always a problem in describing higher consciousness. Um, group results for perceived relationship between the adjectives that I provided in the 40 hertz states were as follows. I'll have to move quickly. Uh, as you notice, the peak value there, although there, the standard deviations are high, but at the top of the list is happiness and a loving state, and the others are all down the line. And um, negative associations were with uh, the adjectives disappointment, stress, distress, alertness, focus, concentration. The comparison of meditators and non-meditators baseline values, we did not see a difference. This is in contradiction to the earlier literature gathered by Davidson et al. However, my group was small. Three meditators so far in the study and seven non-meditators. However, during the maximizing 40 hertz during the neurofeedback neuro period, we did see a highly significant difference between non-meditators who didn't do better than 10%, some actually went down, and meditators who were up between 23 and 36 percent more 40 hertz. Now I want to show you one case of a volunteer who um, took salvia divinorum, which is an entheogen, it's a psychedelic herb used in shamanic ceremonies by indigenous healers in Mexico. Um, it's legal. 28-year-old volunteer who had previously experienced this herb, uh, just show you how uh, the time kinetics of it, I took a measurement at 7.37 p.m. baseline, 7.45 p.m. she smoked salvia and experienced a peak intensity uh, 10 minutes to 15 minutes later and then already at 8.04 uh, there was a coming down from the state of post-peak intensity and finally she felt fully recovered at 8.18 p.m. so it's a, less than an hour. Um, I have very little time, but just to show you something about her baseline and focus on this. This is a brain spectrogram, so we have one minute of time versus frequency. Mostly she's in the relaxed mode, uh, 10 hertz or less, with occasional bursts up at higher frequencies. Uh, during the peak state, however, there's a lot of eye blink. That's what all these green lines are, and there was a lot of movement. And um, the subject, uh, as you see, the brain waves are now enhanced in all frequencies. The lower frequencies are just are, are off the scale, actually, and there are also um, activity at 40 hertz, etc. cetera. Um, and then coming down from the peak experience, uh, you see a relaxation in the brain spectrogram, and finally, uh, at the end point, uh, it's curious because uh, now you can actually see a depletion in the focus function. This uh, software also measures focus and alertness and this is actually not looking at all like her recovered state, even though she's purportedly feeling recovered. This is um, the percent difference over her baseline scores in her self-reported state of pre, well, the pre-state before the entheogen, the peak experience, the post-peak and recovered. So these are subjective states or aspects of the experience. And during the peak, actually, she experienced a 20, minus 20 plus percent uh, diminution in 40 hertz post-peak that increased, and then as she recovered, it became similar to baseline. So it's a bifurcated response, first below uh, baseline and then above. Conclusions are as follows. Experienced meditators who presumably cultivate higher states of consciousness can produce greater amplitudes of 40 hertz from the prefrontal region than non-meditators during neurofeedback. Descriptions of the 40 hertz state were similar in meditators and non-meditators, with feelings of bliss and love as being most prevalent. Salvia divinorum produced abrupt changes in 40 hertz brain waves with a substantial decrease at peak experience, followed by a substantial increase before returning to baseline. The limitations of the study, the study is small, it's incomplete, still in progress. I only have three meditators, but hopefully I'd like to uh, get equal numbers of meditators and non-meditators and do a statistical analysis of the quantitative aspects in the end. Also, the salvia divinorum case is singular and may or not be representative. And I should also say that it's very difficult to describe inner states of higher consciousness in words, and that, of course, puts limitations on, on what we can gather about it. Questions for further study that relate to some of our interests in this group are, does training gamma brainwaves help improve meditation and or increase the experience of higher states of consciousness? And secondly, does training gamma brainwaves from the prefrontal region help open 
the so-called third eye, and improved subject performance and healing and psi research studies? Those questions remain to be seen, and I hope to explore them. Thank you. Um, I would like to indulge in the pleasure of the first question, and this is, we do so much with the brain, and I keep going to the heart um, and wondering, is there a way to dovetail some of this research with the heart, considering that many of the statements that were made were really coming from a place of what we say heart, and there are so many heart attacks and heart ailments in society that maybe that higher state we may be missing something. Well, of course, um, there have been other studies, I'd say particularly looking at coherence um, of um, the Fourier analysis of heart uh, frequencies of emission. And I just haven't done that here, but I think uh, I could add that. I have uh, heart rate variability equipment. But this was just exploring an initial study to explore 40 hertz and higher consciousness and uh, just the beginning. Yes, hi. Hi, Beverly, it's Maria. Yeah. Um, great study. I wanted to know specifically your baseline activity. What, what did you have them do? Did you give them a specific instruction? I did. I gave them a very specific instruction, and I don't have that for you to read, but it was okay. uh, putting your mind in a neutral state, not thinking about anything in particular from the past, present, or even going into the future, to just remain into a relaxed, open-eyed gaze without focusing actively on anything particular. That was essentially it. I, don't, I, I read something to them. And actually, they also could look at it to be sure they understood it. OK, just, and just one more thing quickly. Um, glad to hear that you had their subjective um, responses to, even though they were hard to put into words. That is so valuable for this kind of research. Thank you. Charlie Yemens, you might think that when people go into altered states, they might have uh, increase in some of the lower frequencies like theta and alpha. And I wondered if there was a correlation between higher rates of gamma, uh, higher amplitudes of gamma, and at the same time, increase in some of the lower frequencies. I didn't ask that question in my study. Um, and nor did Davidson in his study. And I can't remember whether Lutz did this. So these are the main studies in recent years on 40 hertz and, and uh, meditators. Uh, Again, um, all of these things could be explored. It's just a matter of uh, taking more data simultaneously. Hi, Beverly. Juan Acosta. I've done now uh, close to 20 subjects on the salvia divinorum. Uh, a uh, preliminary report is being published in Journal of Neurotherapy. I presented last year at ISNR. And I haven't looked at gamma. <laughs> <laughs> But a very consistent effect is suppression of power in all frequency bands. And sometimes there's an alpha rebound during the return to ordinary reality state. Hmm. So uh, I'd love to, to talk over this data with you and stuff. Now, uh, as I mentioned, a, a better possibly entheogen to look at gamma is ayahuasca. And, and there are currently studies looking at that. And that state does produce a very enhanced state of consciousness. It's lasting several hours. So there's a good place to look for that, too. Have you found it to be contextual one with people under different experiences of salvia? Because everybody has a different trip, obviously. Salvia is such a powerful experience You know, with the extract. Um, you have the people that can surrender to it completely, and then you have the people that, that don't let go. The ones that surrender completely usually have a very positive experience. Um, I haven't, you know, I wish I'd recorded all of the reports because they were amazing descriptions, but none of them were along the lines of, I had an enlightenment experience, or I had a very high state of awareness or something. They were mostly having to do with uh, Distortions of space-time, bodily... Yes. Uh... That's right. That's what I had mm -hmm. in this particular case as well. Mm -hmm. This particular subject experienced herself, get ready for this, Yes. as a crayon. Uh, yes. yes. Yes, indeed. With indeed. a pointed head and just a body like a cylinder. And 
and was, went through some anxiety whether she would be a crayon forever. That's right, that's and, right. And so the beginning part of that, especially the peak, was a bit of anxiety and lots of movement.